Hi everybody, Mitzi Della Cruz here, host of Lincoln Live, the show that is all about you. And today, Lincoln, we have a very special guest and I'm super excited about our guest, about our raffle prize, and just to hear more about solar. I know that a lot of you have a lot of questions, and so we're going to get all of your questions answered and we're going to learn a lot about energy saving pros. So today, our guest is Brian Pierce. Hey Brian, thank you so much for joining us today. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, my name is Brian Pierce. Um, I love this part of California. It's a, I think it's the best part of California, except for maybe Disneyland. That might be a close second. Um, I've got my wife is named Amanda, and we have five children and one do any day now. So oh. it's six, which is crazy. So my life is always mayhem. It's always oh. crazy. You know what? I didn't realize you guys were expecting me again. Congratulations. Well, you know, it's like number six, so it's like she's always pregnant. So. Uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what are the ages of the kids? My oldest is 12, and I have an 11, I have an 8, a 6, a 3, and uh, any day now. Like, uh, like Shrill this weekend, probably. Oh my gosh, I'm like exhausted. Yeah, you're it's, about like, that. <laughs> it's good time. It's good fun. Yeah. So, um, I'm the owner, one of the owners of Energy Saving Pros. Yes. And uh, when we first got into solar, First, the first doors I knocked on were in Lincoln, because uh, all my analysis told me that Lincoln was like one of the prime spots of people that needed to go solar and needed to save money on energy. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, no, I could totally see that. So um, for everybody that's watching, I know a lot of you guys have questions about solar specifically, about the tax credit, about um, different financing options, all kinds of stuff. So please, we encourage you to ask your questions live, interact, share the live video, and comment that you have shared so you can be entered into uh, our raffle. And the raffle prize is so generous. Can you tell everybody about the raffle prize? Absolutely. Today's raffle prize is a solar attic fan. So the, attic, the fan sits on your roof, has a solar panel on it, and when the sun hits the, the solar panel, it pulls the air out of your attic, and it pulls the air in from other parts of other vents in your attic and other, you know, your dormer vents and your, your vents in your, under, in your eaves, and it pulls the cooler air in, so it helps keep your house a lot cooler. Um, you know, if you get in an attic, which, which we do, in the middle of summer, it can be 100 degrees outside, but your attic is 145 degrees. Right. So if you can get that attic temperature down, it helps keep your house cooler. We normally sell those installed for, for uh, $850, and uh, they're not the cheap plastic ones, it's metal housing, it's all metal, powder coated, and they have a 25 year warranty. So they're, they're very nice. Yeah. And if they don't want, if whoever wins doesn't want the attic fan, we'll do a gift card for whatever restaurant you like. Okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah. All right, so can you tell us a little bit about uh, maybe the solar, kind of how it works? Yeah. Um, actual panels. The actual panels? System. I'm not gonna get into the detail okay. about how yeah. the protons uh, go through the panel and get yeah. in a negative and a, and a positive charge, but the solar panels sit on your roof, they produce electricity, uh, DC electricity, electricity, direct current, mm -hmm. kind of like a battery is. And then it goes from, from the panel to the inverter, and that converts it to AC, which is what your house runs on, alternating current, mm -hmm. and then that goes into your electrical panel, um, you know, where you've got your, your breakers, yeah. and it ties into one of those breakers. And we, we put one in, and it says solar on, it's got a big red sticker next to it. And then that, all those breakers are connected to what's called a bus bar. And that, that electrical bus bar um, is what call, runs all the power for your house. Uh -huh. So the power goes into that um, electrical panel. Any of these circuits in your house that are pulling power to your air, your air conditioner, your fridge, your lights, yeah. whatever it is, pulls that power first. If we're producing more power than you're using at that moment, then that extra power gets pushed back into the grid your meter kind of spins backwards. It's digital, so it doesn't actually spin, but Sorry. it goes back to the grid, and then that's what PG&E sees, and that's how you get, you get credit if you're sending them power, and then if you're buying power, you're, you're paying for it. So. Gotcha. Yeah, and we try to build our systems in an ideal world if there's enough roof space and budgetary constraints and all those things uh -huh. to basically eliminate your bill, like 99 or 100% of your bill for the whole year. So what, I'm glad that you mentioned that. One of the things that I think is so great about energy saving pros is that you guys really take a holistic approach mm -hmm. to whole home energy conservation. So you guys are looking at everything. You're not just looking at, you know, okay, what are the bills historically, but you're also looking at what can we do yeah. on top of solar to get to, you know, not just maybe put as many panels on the roof, but also do, uh, well, you tell us what you guys do. You've got it down. <laughs> I'm excited about your company. <laughs> um, we, we try to take a holistic approach. 
approach to see yeah. what things have the best return on investment for our customers. Because sure. we think if we give the best investment advice to our customers that, and they get the best uh, bang for their buck, then they'll want to um, come back to us again in the future or refer their friends to us. Sure. So, you know, if we can go in and look at their HVAC or their, their heating and cooling system, um, there's a lot of houses in Lincoln. Because uh -huh. a lot of times the houses in Lincoln or even Rockland area, um, the houses were built during the housing boom and then, you know, the late 90s and early 2000s, and those houses were going up so fast that we've been in a lot of those attics, and there's zero insulation in some of it or all of that attic. Wow. And so we'll look at the insulation, yeah. we'll look at vents. We did a house in Lincoln where they had no vents on the roof. It was completely against code, Yeah. but things were going up so fast that, you know, the inspectors were missing things. Sure. And so we go in and see what things have the best, um, Best return on investment. Yeah. We try to do, we, you know, we try to incorporate those things in attic fans or pool pumps or air conditioning or whatever yeah. it is, and then we add the solar to say, you know, this gives you the best return on investment. So not only the solar, but we do all the other things as well. And sometimes you'll get companies that want to go overboard and they'll try to get you, you know, if you already have double pane windows, they'll try yeah. to sell you triple pane windows, and <laughs> you know, and the return on investment on that most of the time isn't isn't very good. So yeah. we'll, we'll look at those things as well. So I know that um, I'm sure a lot of people out there that are watching might have questions in regards to the tax credit. Yes. It was extended. What are we looking at? So it's extended until 2023. Okay. Um, it starts to go down a little bit over the next couple years, but this year and next year at least, um, it's a full 30%. So if you okay. buy a solar system for $20,000, mm -hmm. you get a 30% federal tax credit. And a tax credit is not a deduction. Sure. A tax credit is a dollar for dollar reduction of how much taxes you pay. So, oh, okay. you know, if you're a W-2 employee and every week you're getting your paycheck or, or bi-weekly or once a month and they're holding out your taxes, at the end of the year, um, you should get $6,000 more of a tax return. Oh, wow. Yeah. Or if you're self-employed, yeah. you know, like if you're a realtor and you're self-employed and at the end of the year you have to pay a whole bunch of money in taxes, yeah. like probably your favorite time of the year, <laughs> then, that's, then that check you write to the federal government would be $6,000 less. Yeah. And let's just say this year you have a ton of write-offs. Uh -huh. Um, and you can't use all the all the tax credit this year. You can roll it over to the next year and the year after, and the year after. So That's you know, some people say, "Hey, I've got a you know a nine thousand dollar tax credit. I can't use it all in one year." That's okay. You can continue to carry that forward to the next few years. I like the way that sounds. It, it's, it's a good it's a good deal. <laughs> I understand as well. Um, there have been changes to the way that even home appraisers are valuing solar mm -hmm. systems. So historically, there was no value given, right? Yeah, I mean, the, it's, it's taken the, the economy a little while to, and the appraisers and the lenders a little while to figure it out. Yeah. Um, but most of the time, it, it adds value of, of the cost minus the tax credit, depending how old the system is, maybe a little bit less. But most of our clients have a, a their system pays for itself in about the first five years. Okay. You know, sometimes six, sometimes four. Yeah. But about five years seems to be about the average. Got it. So it's kind of like saying, hey, if you pay this bill for the next five years, and then you get. 25 years after that, a free power. It's, it's, right. a, it's a pretty good investment. Yeah. Um, most solar companies, a lot of solar companies around here, one of the things that makes this a little bit different is a lot of solar companies around here are just really only sales organizations. Right. So they have door knockers. Um, and I'm not against door knockers. I've done lots of door knocking in, earlier in my life. <laughs> um, but a lot of those companies don't do any of the work. Right. They just make the sale, and then they, um, they have someone else that does the work. We do all that in-house. So who do you go back to when you have a, a problem or a complaint? Yeah, the sales organizations, sometimes they don't know what they're talking about. Right. They don't do the full service. They have no control of the subcontractors or the, the company that they're working for. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that we don't, we don't, I don't personally believe in the uh, solar leases. Okay. Like the solar city leases or the Vivint leases or any of those. I don't think they're a very good investment. So every time I look at it, I can always get someone a better deal. Um, even if they don't want to pay anything out of pocket, with financing where they own the system and not the lease company. So sure. I've, had, I've had a lot of cus, um, friends say or customers say, um, well, I, I want to get a lease or I'm thinking about a lease because I don't want the liability of a loan. Right. And those leases have way more teeth in them and are way, way more uh, way more powerful than just a loan. So yeah. I mean, there's a lot more of a commitment to that lease. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, from a real estate standpoint, not only does it really murky up the waters when you're trying to sell the house, uh, power purchase agreement, same thing. Yeah. Um, so I see a lot of times where homes will sit, um, they're advertised as having solar, but once the buyer actually looks at the bottom line, they don't want anything to do with the home unless the seller pays off the lease or yeah. the PPA. And a lot of times those homeowners have had that system for three or four years. Yeah. And the, the cost to buy it out is 
more than it should have been to buy this system to start with. Right. So you've been paying for it for three or four years, and now if you want to buy it, you have to pay more than you should have to start with. It's, it's just not a very good deal. Right. So, I mean, they're easy to sell, Yeah. but I, I just don't think they're a very good investment. No, I, I agree. I agree. So, so you, you touched on it a little bit, but can you tell us more about what really sets you guys apart in the solar industry? Uh, well, one of the things is we do all of our work in-house. So our, our electricians and our rackers and our um, carpenters and our you know insulation guys and our you know HVAC and uh, heating guys, those guys are all our employees. They work for us. Uh, most of them have worked with us for a long time. We, we try really hard to take care of our employees because it's, it's, you know, it's easier to, it wants, to keep someone happy than to hire a new person and train them. Right. Um, but we do that so that we can maintain quality. Mm -hmm. You know, in the past we used to sub some of the work out, you know, we'd keep a crew or two going and then we'd have some of our jobs when we had too many, we'd sub them out. Yeah. We just don't do that anymore because we have too much problem with quality control. Um, and so we do all of it in-house now. Um, that's one of the things that separates us from the others. The other thing is when we go in and meet with the customer, we, we analyze all their needs, we analyze their usage, and then we present a, a price to buy the solar. Yeah. And then from that, we then look at all the different, if they want financing, sure. we then look at all the financing options. A lot of companies come and say, here's your, here's your solar, yeah. here's the financing, it's one option, and, and it's not always one size fits all. Well, definitely. You know, because there's a lot of bad financing out, there, financing out there, and some, you know, if you're paying more than you should for financing, right. then that price of that solar doesn't matter so much. Right. So yeah, you're either paying the power company or for financing, right? It's yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you're paying for it one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and we, we just try to, we really try hard to just find the best deals for our customers. Right. So it's not always the easiest either. Yeah. So. No, I totally get that. Well, then one of the things that really um, draws me to your company is the fact that you guys do so much in the community. And, you know, Lincoln Live, our show is really about, um, finding companies that align with our values of giving back to the community and just really embracing um, holistically, you know, the, just promoting um, our community. Yeah. I know that recently you guys actually um, donated some roofing materials and some man hours and took care of a, 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 a elderly gal that, um, that needed a roof and, and was having a lot of problems and deterioration of her home as a result and, and that gal is in Lincoln as well. I just think that's so incredible. We, we've done those types of things um, lots of times. Yeah. And uh, you know, if you have the resources and there's an opportunity, um, we take those opportunities to try to help. Right. I mean, we don't. We can't do everything all of the time. Of course. Of um, course. <laughs> but I can't tell you how many times I go to soccer games and they're the, the, one of the teams is wearing you know the jersey that says our company's name on it. Yeah. Or, um, we see our sports bottles all around because we support like the the Mandarin or Mandarin yeah. or things like that. We sponsored, you know, 4-H animals, mm -hmm. you know, all sorts of things. Uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, uh, yeah. the Diabetes Foundation, and all, and all sorts of things. So, yeah. um, we could probably one person here a day talking to us about something. <laughs> we, we can't take all those opportunities, but we, we take a lot of it. Yeah, no, and I, I really I appreciate that. That's really awesome that you guys do that. Try. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I know that there's an event coming up that you guys have also sponsored, right? The um, Taste of a Small Town? Yeah. Yeah, in fact, we're doing that in our parking lot, yeah. which uh, I hope is completed by the time that, <laughs> that event is. Right now, we're uh, we're resurfacing our parking lot. We had a poor retaining wall, yeah. and so oh, it should be completed by then. But uh, that, that's just one of the things that we like to do. It, it, everyone will come here. There'll be different restaurants and uh, beer and wine tasting and all sorts of different things. And it'll raise money for the local schools. Right. Um, we've done quite a bit of work with the local schools. Yeah. And uh, that's that's one of the things that we like to do. I've got five kids, so you know, <laughs> I can think I keep these schools in business. Actually, you do. <laughs> yeah, I've had schools. I've had school. We have we have probably three or four customers call us a week. Uh -huh. um, sometimes big customers, sometimes commercial customers, and they'll call us, and we end up going out and fixing systems for other companies. Oh yeah. So we end up fixing a lot of the mistakes that you know um, other companies leave behind when they don't answer the phone. And we have a full time service department. We We'll send guys out there, and um, a lot of times the work, if it's, it's covered, covered under warranty, yeah. customers pay you know, almost nothing. Right. So that's one of the things that sets us apart, and that we continue to provide the service to our customers as well. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Tracy Hansen asks, does it cost very much when you run it all night? I imagine it's cheaper than an AC unit. So I guess, what's oh, the, the solar cost outfit? comparative from having solar and not having solar? No, no, he's, she's referring to the, are you referring to the solar attic fan, Tracy? I'm, Look it 
growing our butt. <laughs> um, the solar attic fan, just so you know, it only runs when the sun is hitting the solar panel. So um, it costs zero to run it, um, but it doesn't run at night. So it runs when the sun is out and it's the hottest part of the day. Which is when you need it. Yeah. Um, whole, whole house fans, you yeah. can run at night. And we've done some studies. If you move into a house and you get those old whole house fans, those are the three by three box it's yeah. with the louvers that open and close, and it sounds like there's a 747 landing on the roof. It's so loud. Yeah. Sometimes those use more power than the air conditioner. That's crazy. So I have people say, I run this all night and it saves me a ton of money, but I still have a $500 a month electric bill. <laughs> and then we go and actually check it compared to the air conditioning, and that whole house fan sometimes uses more power. Those older ones, especially, are very. Uh, inefficient. Yeah. We install a whole house fan that's whisper quiet. Right. You know, it doesn't have the louvers that start to sh shake. It's just intake great. Um, it's super quiet and it's super, super efficient. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of the things that's, it costs a little bit more than those big bulky ones, but um, it does save you a lot of money over time. Yeah, definitely. And she did say yes about the um, attic fan. Okay. So I was right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what can you use? Um, have you been able to see the difference in cost for people who have solar compared to not having solar and why it's so important? Yeah, okay, so the most of our customers are in the, this region, in the PG&E territories, in Lincoln and Rockland and um, Auburn and areas all sure. around here, um, are paying anywhere from 26 to 33 cents per kilowatt hour on average. Uh -huh. You know, and then once we go solar, if you take the cost of the solar and divide it over 25 years, yeah. the cost of that power is anywhere from six to seven and a half or eight cents per kilowatt hour. So, um, I mean, I've had some customers that are in the five cent range, just depending on a few things. Sure. So let's just say it's seven cents is a, is a fairly good average number. Yeah. That means that you're paying about a quarter of the cost uh -huh. for power when you buy solar than when you um, buy it from the utility. Gotcha. So that's kind of the differentiator, is you're paying so much less for the the power. Um, plus you get the tax credit, which is awesome. Now, and if I understand it right, you're locking mm -hmm. yourself in as well as far as the, the rate, right? Yeah, so once you pay for the solar, I mean, you get that power yeah. um, forever. And I've, I've got people right now that ask me, hey, is the price of solar going to go down? I mean, the price of solar over the last nine years has gone down uh, a lot. Yeah. And I think we're now to a point where I don't see it going down uh, much more at all because the cost of the raw materials is so high. Yeah. Plus, labor is getting significantly more expensive. Totally. There's a major labor shortage in the construction industry, especially in California. Yeah. And so, you know, just the, the copper and the aluminum and the steel and all those different things have gone up in price. Like this year, copper is up about 8% from where it was a year ago. Wow. Steel is up 26% from where it was a year ago. Yeah. Uh, aluminum up, is up about 9% from where it was a year ago. So, just the raw material cost has gone up quite a bit, but our prices have stayed pretty much flat over the last three years, so. Wow, the, were you gonna ask a question? No, I think that's insane, and yeah. then also, um, I guess for other people who may be watching are interested, you said that um, labor is, is low in, a, in a employment, so are you guys looking to hire? Oh, we're good question. Yeah, we're looking to hire. Um, you know, if someone's got um, some construction skills, or if they wanna get into more on the sales side, um, we're hiring in both of those areas. Um, so, in fact, unemployment rate is super low right now. Yeah. Do you hire people who don't have work experience but do have certificates in heavy equipment? Um, yeah, we would love to talk to that person. If you're thinking of someone specific. <laughs> Perhaps it could be your brother. I don't know. I'm just going to go ahead. You know, what, what we look for more is someone, um, they don't have to have a perfect pass. Yeah. They don't have to be, you know, um, look like a Ken doll or a Barbie doll. But what we look for is people that have a good work ethic right. and, and good integrity. Yes. And so, you know, some of our best employees have, you know, lived a tough life before. Yeah. But they uh, we, but they do an excellent job. So we really look for people that can work hard and do a good job and that will represent what we want to represent as a company, you know, right. good service and, you know, attention to detail and yeah. respect for the customer. Yeah. I know it was awesome. You guys actually donated um, some heavy equipment and some man hours to the McBean Bark Park. I know you guys remember that a couple months back. We just opened that in uh, at McBean Park in Lincoln, and that was awesome. Um, but so I was going to ask you. I don't have any dogs. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My life is too crazy with all the kids. <laughs> right. We 
and, can't stand dogs. <laughs> and, and I've never been on TV before, so I don't know who to look at. I know. <laughs> you know, neither do I. I'm looking at her. I'm looking at you guys. I'm looking at her. Anyway, um, so what about somebody with a tile roof? I mean, how do they get solar and not... Uh, yeah. The satellite guy. Um, sometimes that happens. So I know um, a lot, a lot of service-based businesses. You know, they'll say they'll kind of create promises to the homeowner or wh whoever their client is, and they'll say, you know, this is what we do. And then once you know the phone rings, when someone goes to take them up on that, they're kind of you know they go they go silent. But mm -hmm. that's the one thing I. I really encourage you guys if you're watching if you're considering solar if you're considering doing any work to your roof HVAC anything that you may need energy saving pros for please look at their reviews I mean they really do speak for themselves we have a lot of good Yelp reviews yeah and it's harder to get a good review than it is I think it's harder to get one good review than five negative ones oh yeah we've had almost no negative reviews we have yeah. 80 or 90 or 50 or whatever five star Yelp reviews and Google reviews and Facebook reviews, and, um, and we work really hard to keep people happy. Right. It's not always possible, and then we do our best. That's good stuff. So what happens if somebody has shading issues? Like they've got those big, tall redwoods in the back, and they're kind of shading their roof for part of the day. Do they have to cut those down, or what do they do? That's a really good question, okay. and I can't give you. I'm gonna sound like a politician, which I hate sounding like. <laughs> um, it just depends. Yeah. You know, if if the shading is to the east. Um, and there's nothing to the south, and it's wide open that way, then we can make it work. If, the, if there's a tree, and it's 100 feet tall, and it's right against the front of the house, yeah. and it's shading the whole thing all the time, th there's nothing we can do. We, we, that tree would have to come down. Or we can maybe do a ground mount in the back, right. or we can put the solar on the shed or on a, a shade structure. So there's things that we can do from that um, perspective. We do use... Um, top quality panels, and we use inverters that allow, you know, if one panel's getting shaded, all the others to continue to produce at their maximum. Yeah. Um, so each panel has an optimizer, and it allows you to see what each panel is doing all the time. So that helps mitigate the shade. But, you know, I can't make, I can't make, you know, solar panels produce if it's not getting sun sometimes. Right. Um, I was actually at the fair, and I didn't have my company shirt on, and I was talking to other solar companies just kind of figuring out what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. Secret shopper. <laughs> yeah, secret shopping. And one of the guys from another solar company said, we have special new panels and inverters that, that work even in the shade. Really? And I thought, oh, great. They've changed the laws of physics for the solar panel. <laughs> it's impossible. So, right. you know, it still has to use panels, still has to get sun. Yeah. But normally the shade is uh, 
less than people think. We have some special measuring equipment we get on the roof. Um, we can do it with satellite, but we also have one that we get on the roof. And it basically takes a picture of the horizon and it produces a report for us that shows us what the effects of those trees does for the whole 12 months. Yeah. And it's a pretty detailed report, so it's pretty cool that we can do that too. That's awesome. So Kathy Johnson says hi. Hi, congratulations. <laughs> and then Adrian asks, how do you determine how much solar is needed on a new PG&E account? On a new PG&E account? Oh, good question. That is a good question. Mm -hmm. In fact, I get that question from the cell people all the time. Yeah. So what we try to do is we try to look at the size of the home, the height of the ceilings, um, is there a pool or a spa? We look at those things. And if there is, how big is the pool or spa? Is there waterfalls? Um, and what, how many people live in the home? Um, small children, a lot more washing, dish, you know, dishes and laundry. Um, that uses a fair bit. And then also, um, how many people in the home and what temperature do you keep the house at? So if someone keeps their house at 80 degrees and someone, another person keeps their house at 70, yeah. there's a huge difference in that. Um, and then we kind of look at what we know about the neighborhood. So, you know, if, if and the previous homeowners. Sure. Um, and normally we're pretty good about narrowing it down. We're pretty good about getting really close to where it needs to be. So what do you do if your system is like grossly overproducing? Is PG&E going to give you back dollar for dollar the kilowatts? So, <laughs> the, I mean the price that they would charge you or? So on your PG&E bill, what PG&E does is they give you credit at the retail value uh -huh. of the power. So if you're selling power back to them and you're at, uh, at you know tier number three and it's during the peak hours and they're yeah. giving you you know, 36 cents or 40 cents a kilowatt hour. And then, so on your bill, you, you'd see that 30 or 40 cents. And then at night when you're buying power from them, you're buying it at those off peak rates. Uh -huh. So, you know, 26 cents or 28 cents or whatever. And so you're, you're, you're selling high and buying low, which sounds kind of cheesy, but that's really what it is. And then um, at the end of the day, if you've got credits, you keep rolling up, building them up. And yeah. then at the end of the month, if you have credit, you roll that over to the next month. And then at the end of a year, yes. They look at you, if you have excess credit, yeah. you know, they might say, hey, you have $400 in credit, but that's at the retail rate. Yeah. And then the, what they say is, okay, you have $400 in credit, but we're gonna give you the money at the wholesale rate. Right. So that $400 becomes, you know, $63.12. So, you know, most of the time though, yeah. when we install a system, we someone goes, I wanna oversize it. You know, most of the time they watch their production and they start cranking down the thermostat. Yeah. Because most people want to be more comfortable. Right. You know, power is so expensive here that for the average person in California, 79 degrees for your temperature in your house is hot. Yeah, it is. You know, and you, but you suffer through it. Yeah. So once you get solar, you you reduce the suffering a little bit. Oh, yeah. So every now and then I get a call from a customer that's, and we ask, are you going to lower your air conditioning? Are you going to change your thermostat? Yeah. You know, we try to figure out what their needs will be, not only historically, but going forward. Yeah. And sometimes they say, we're not going to change anything. Right. And then they call us a year later and say, hey, I still have this bill, you know, 500 bucks or something for the whole year. And you told me to be zero. And we do all the research, come to find out they lowered the thermostat from 78 to 74. Right. And that's a big difference. Sure. So, you know, you want to know those things. So if someone has a credit building up, most of the time, they just use more power and increase their comfort. Yeah. Put up more Christmas lights. <laughs> you know, I have a question too. So what... Do you see our um, like the largest energy consumption appliances or, um, or you know, what, what, are the, what are the energy hogs in your thank home? Thank you. That's my question. Um, <laughs> uh, deep freeze in the garage means uh, a lot of power. Yeah. Because it's in the garage and your garage is you know 120 degrees or 105 degrees or whatever all day. Yeah. Um, that is a that's something that people don't see coming. Yeah. You know they 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 think they know everything and then they put a freezer or a fridge in the garage that adds up. Um, but the majority of your um, electric usage goes to your heating and air conditioning. Sure. That's by far the biggest. Yeah. Um, pools. Yep. You know, if you go out and buy, get a pool installed, and you go, oh, I just spent eighty thousand dollars buying a pool. Yeah. Or whatever the number is. What you don't know is now that's going to cost you an extra hundred, hundred fifty dollars a month in electricity. Wow. Because if you only, if you don't run your pump enough, uh -huh. your plaster won't last very long. Oh. And your pool gets algae and it's gross. And yeah. Now you have this big investment that. You know, isn't gonna last as long because you're trying to be cheap on that on the uh, the pump, and so we look at pool pumps a lot. Like a new pool pump, if someone doesn't have one of the new variable speed pumps, sure, the new pool pumps pay for themselves in like 16 to 18 months. Wow. And they're so much more quiet. Yeah. So you know, I would listen to any motors in your home, like in your fridge, your freezer, your your well pump if you have a well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, any of those things, and if the motor starts to get loud you know that that's probably spiking up on energy usage. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. So, but air conditioning is a huge deal. Yeah. And we find a lot of companies, HVAC companies, will come out and they'll say, I've seen them come out and take a three ton uh, unit uh -huh. and put in a four or five ton, oh. but not change the venting. Oh yeah. You know, the air intakes. And so if your air intakes are undersized, uh -huh. it's like trying to suck, you know, with a whole lot of power through a tiny straw. Right. And it will burn out your unit. It's not very efficient. So sure. little things like that, that you just have to pay attention to. Well, and that's why I think it's so incredible what you guys do. You look at everything because you're right. There's a lot of things that are interlocking and you might be trying to save money on the front end, but you're really going to spend a lot more on the back end or vice versa. Um, so you need somebody that is an expert in, in all things energy efficiency to really evaluate your yeah. whole system. Yeah, you know what, and there's really, you know, you've got, you, you can look at five or six things uh -huh. and get a pretty good assessment. Yeah. You know, you look at the air conditioner, you look at the attic to see the insulation, that's a huge deal, uh -huh. especially in Lincoln. Yeah. You know, there's so many homes with very little or no insulation in Lincoln that we've been totally surprised by that. Um, we started doing roofing this year. Yes. Because we couldn't. I couldn't find a good roofer to refer deals to. Right. You know, we'd refer a deal to them, they'd go great. We'd refer another deal to them, and they'd never call the person. Right. You know, and so we started doing roofing this year just to get a better control of the quality. Yeah. And it's allowed us to find other ways for efficiency. We can put in ridge vents or more things like that. So. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, so you guys did our roof a couple years ago um, on the house that we sold just a little while ago. and. Um, I mean, all you did was the, uh, put up a new pool roof and you put in some vents for us and we did the solar attic fan and put in a, a whole house fan and oh my goodness, it cut our bills in half and that was without even doing solar. I mm. mean, that was incredible. Yeah, it makes a huge difference if you don't have enough insulation or your roof isn't properly vented. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite things that we do is we can go into an attic and suck all the insulation out uh -huh. with a big vacuum, you know, it'll suck up rats or bats or <laughs> mice or whatever's you know, up there pests. yeah and you get in your attic it's been up there for 20 years yeah it's so dirty well, what we find is a lot of the dust in your house comes from your attic yeah i bet um comes from your you know for your can lights or yeah. any of the, the holes in your ceiling the air actually the dust comes through about 50 percent experts say wow the dust comes 50 well, percent or more comes from your attic so we'll go into your attic we'll suck everything out yeah bacteria if you have bats there's horrible bacteria that from their guano yes. um, and so we'll go up suck everything out and then we'll foam seal all the penetrations into your house uh -huh. and I've gotten calls from customers saying I'm so happy you did this I've got so much less dust in my house it's so much easier to keep it clean yeah but it also improves the quality of the air um, and it, it just makes your home a more a healthier environment right so and that's so important is I know especially in Sacramento Valley there's so many people that are suffering from allergies and different or irritants. Asthma or yes. COPD or other lung issues. And some of those problems we're creating on our own or we're right. allowing, we don't even know where some of them come from. Yeah. And so, you know, if you're able to do something like that where you air seal it and it's so much quieter and less dust and yeah. then you look at the, the roof and the insulation and the attic and, it's, and the solar, um, you know, you can make a, a big change in someone's life and still have a four or five year break even. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. We try. <laughs> it's fun. I really enjoy it. Yeah. I've, I've done other. I've had other careers. I've sold other things. I've, I've had other jobs. But I'm so excited about the solar we're able to do with the, all the service that we are because we're we're basically selling things that pay for themselves. Right. And it's it's not not hey you want your house to look better or whatever. It's hey do you want to save some money? And yeah. this is this is it's actually an investment. Most of our solar customers have a you know a 17 to 22 percent return on investment or ROI. Right. It's kind of being a little nerdy with some statistics. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that compared to what you get out of a CD or your savings account isn't even close. That's true. Yeah. So um, I, I think we, we jumped ahead a lot, but- Sorry. No, no, I like it. Um, one of the things that I forgot to ask you up front is how stable is your business? Because we, we hear so many um, solar companies are popping up everywhere and maybe historically a company did HVAC, but now they're doing solar and, and that's great. But how long have you guys been in business and what are your um, your warranties? What do they look like? So our business, we our, our business, our company used to be uh, Lumis General Contracting Company. Okay. And in 2012, we reincorporated uh -huh. to Energy Saving Pros to represent more of what we're doing. Sure. And so since then, um, the, with our revenue numbers and how long we've been around, only 90, 96% of companies don't get to our size, and 96% of companies don't last as long as we've lasted. 
Wow. So, you know, my business partner, Shad, and I, we built this company because we want to, you know, we want to be here for a long time. Right. You know, my dad always taught me the only business that pays is a business that stays. Right. You know, so, you know, I don't want to be starting a company every two years and, yeah. you know, not being able to look at people that we did work for in the eye. You know, they see me a year later and they're mad at me because we, we're not, not around anymore. Right. And so we built this company to last. Yeah. Um, our warranties on, on everything we do, like on our solar, the 25-year work reach of warranty. You know, it, it matches the manufacturer's warranty. Okay. And so if, if, if anything happens in the 25 years that has anything to do with what we did, we'll be out there fixing it. Um, we have liability insurance. A lot of these, a lot of smaller contractors yeah. only have the contractor's bond. Oh. You know, like say fifteen thousand dollar bond. Uh huh. And if you have a problem, fifteen thousand dollars is it's a lot of money, but yeah. it's not a lot if you've got a leak or yeah. if your house burns down or something crazy like that. Right. So we've got millions of dollars of insurance. Yeah. Just in case, you know, I get hit by a meteorite. Yeah. You know, if, if we're not around, <laughs> you're still covered by the insurance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we 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 that's one of the differences. Of us. In fact, we get calls, like I said earlier, to fix those, you know. XYZ dog walking in solar, you know, right. or, or Jim, Jim Bob's chicken in solar. Yeah. You know, everyone and their brother thinks they can do solar now, but we end up fixing their jobs a lot of the time. Chicken and solar in the same place, that's kind of a hard sell. I mean, it actually sounds good to me right now. I'm telling you. Um, Angela asked, How much is the service about cleaning the attic? That sounds great. I wish it just depends on the, on the attic square footage. We normally do quotes one on one, but it's it's anywhere from 80 cents to a dollar a foot of attic space. Um, and then you do the blow in, there's some differences there, but we'd be happy to give her a free quote. We, all of our quotes are free. Oh, nice. You know, um, I don't normally like to just shoot a, a quote off the cuff. Oh, no. Because, you know, you get up there and maybe it's a super easy job and, the pr and it costs you less and you right. can give a good price. Or maybe it's a super hard job. And I hate, um, one of the things that's really prevalent in the construction industry, I hate change orders. Uh -huh. I don't like to do them. I mean, obviously, if the product changes and both parties agree on it, but I don't like to low bid a job and then say, hey, I have to raise the price on you. I think it's dishonest. The whole bait and switch. And I hate the bait and switch. I know it. And it happens a lot, especially on commercial. Yeah. Um, you know, someone will low bid it, just get the job, and then they'll change order. We don't do that. Yeah. I don't like to play that game. I don't like to play with homeowners. Um, so we much more prefer just to do a good, solid quote, let you know what the cost is. You know, if we. Insulation removal is, is different if it's just if we can suck everything out if it's already a blowing insulation Yeah, then that costs less if it's up there and it's batting yeah. and it's rolled in Then we have to bag it up in the attic. It just takes a little bit longer Well, so maybe you can share your phone number with Angela. How would she get a hold of you? Well, our office, and everybody. Our office number is 916-259-2501 That's easy. Yeah, 916-259-2501. I say it twice because that's what I hear on the commercials. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if I was supposed to do, but I did. No, that's, that's you perfect. Can post, you can post it. I will, I will, I will. So what is your territory? How far have you go? Man, we, we've we gone down as far as like LA. Yeah. But I like to stay uh, Fresno North, okay. the Chico. Sure. Uh, we're doing the Harley Davidson um, in Chico. Yeah. We're doing solar for them and uh, doing some re-roofing and putting in a... Um, you know, a big canopy uh -huh. in the back so that, you know, the repair guys can have more shade. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's a cool job to those say that we did. Uh, we just got done doing Pottery World in Rockland. Um, that was a fun job. Yeah. And uh, they, they have a great store. Um, we did the Loomis Union High School, the elementary schools. Yeah. We did all their LED lights and their solar. So I've had the teachers come up to me before, uh, lately and say, hey, thank you so much. I'm not afraid to watch my car at night now. Oh, because nice. Because their lights are so bad, but now it's super bright at night yeah so, yeah. so um so you guys obviously do commercial you do ground mounts what about uh agricultural we, we do farms um we do residential we do commercial we do farms we do um, schools um, on the residential side there's a lot of solar companies that won't do like stone coated steel roofs or they won't uh -huh. do metal roofs or they won't do ground mounts uh, we do all of those um, we do shape structures we do yeah. metal shape structures which are for a residential, a smaller one, metal ones are fairly expensive just because uh -huh. it costs of steel. Uh, we do wood shade structures, like you know, like a pergola with solar panels on it. Sure. You know, um, I get people ask me all the time, "Can you put solar on my on my uh, on my, my shade structure now?" And I look at it. If it's just a vinyl one or an aluminum, we just can't. It won't right. take the weight. Sure. Um, it has to be fairly structurally solid. So, but we do all those things. A lot of companies don't. 
That's interesting. You mentioned the pergola. So if it's got like the slated pergola, you can mm -hmm. do it on top of that? It just depends. Okay. It, it has to be fairly solid. We build them from yeah. scratch. Oh. If someone has one, um, if it is not structurally sound enough, maybe we can beef it up. Sure. We then have to get engineering for it um, because the county has to see engineering because they don't want us to put you know, 1,500 pounds of solar panels on it and have it fall. <laughs> right. We don't, we don't want that either. No, that would be problematic. <laughs> it would be a bad day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, gosh, I had another really good question for you and it's escaping me Did now. you write it down? No, I did oh, not. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Read your mind, but I, I didn't do it. Not this time. No, not this time. Sorry. Do, do we have any more questions from the audience? Um, not necessarily questions, but we've got tons of hi. Hi from Holly. Mm -hmm. Hi from Herbert. Hi from Mary. So I hope you guys, I hope everybody is sharing. Please don't forget, share this video while we are live and we are still live. So share it and comment that you shared so we can get you into the raffle. I see Andra's feverishly over there writing down names of people who are sharing while we are live. So um, that you guys can be entered into the raffle for that solar attic fan. That's a it's a really great prize. Like I said, it, it changed our lives. We even had a, a very new air conditioning system. It was like two years old when we did the roof. Yeah. And even uh, with the HVAC unit being the proper size for the home, being only two years old, we still couldn't get our home under 78 degrees in the summer. It was awful. And then you guys did the roof. You did the venting. Like I said, the solar attic fan, and even without the whole house fan. It just changed our life. We could actually finally sleep at night comfortably, and yeah. it's, it's awesome. Yeah, in the industry, they call it you have to seal the envelope first. Uh -huh. You know, you have to keep everything, um, the air flowing out, and you have to um, get it insulated, and mm -hmm. all those different things. You got to seal that envelope up nice and tight. So, yeah. Yeah, no, this has been fun. <laughs> Did I, you have anything else that you wanted to talk about, or oh, anything we didn't touch on? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we're just. I like to joke around and say that our company is so great, but we're humble. Yeah. You know, I'm just joking. <laughs> but, uh, no, but you know what? We, we like what we do. We want to do this for a long time. Yeah. We like to make our customers happy. Um, those things, you know, make us feel good. And, and when we have a customer that's not happy, it, it's like it feels like we're getting stabbed. You know, we just yeah. we hate it. So we we do our best to, to, to not only present good investments to our customers, yeah. but also keep them happy. So. Yeah. Um, no, I've enjoyed myself. This is this has been fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else. Okay. Yeah. And I do know you guys have long-term employees. You don't usually have a, a high turnover. I mean, you take really great care of your employees. We have a low turnover. I mean, yeah. our, our employees that have, we have lots of employees that have been with us for six, seven, eight years. Yeah. You know, the whole awesome. life life of the company. Yeah. Um, you know, we're we're looking for new people, but most of the time, if they work on a crew with our guys, if they if they're not pulling their weight, yeah, they end up just quitting or we let yeah. them go pretty quick because we want we always want to be putting our best foot work to our right. customers and, and to our employees, you know. We want yeah. our the employees to be happy too. Yeah, and I know you mentioned um, you're looking for sales reps and you're looking for um, perhaps some other folks. Yeah, like, like you, construction guys, guys that yeah. you know, if they can do carpentry, if they can um, roofing build something, if they know how to read a tape measure, which sure. and if they don't, <laughs> if they if they don't know how to read a tape measure, if they just but if they have a good work ethic and they're willing yeah. to learn then we'd be happy to take them take them on as well. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Do you want to start ripping up the names so we can get the raffle going? Or? Yeah, we can do that. Do we have any more questions? Please, guys, don't, you know, feel free, jump in, ask questions. Share while you can. We're about to end it. Yeah, we're about to, about to go on the raffle. I had a customer the other day, a um, good friend of, mine, a friend of mine in Lincoln. Uh huh. He had a uh, solar city system on his roof. Yes. And he bought his home. Uh huh. And the person he bought it from told him, hey, when you buy this house, you're buying out the lease. Uh, and so we went in and we, we added more solar panels, we changed his inverters, we, I mean, yeah. he was building, a, you know, he built out a barn and put an office in it, so he needed a lot more power. Sure. Three days after we were done, Solar City called him and said, hey, where's our inverter? And they, he said, well, I bought out the lease. And they said, yeah. no, you bought out the payments. At the end of the lease term, you still owe us fair market value of the system. Oh. So he's, he's got it and figured out with them. Yeah, but that's one of the many reasons why we don't like selling leases. We don't. Right. I don't believe in them. And, and and even though it might be easier to say, hey, it's not going to cost you anything out of pocket. You're going to yeah. save fifteen percent on your electric bill. Just let us put solar panels on your roof. Yeah, it's easy to sell that. It's not a good investment. Yeah, and it's really not a good investment long term. And so that's just one of those horror stories. Um, 
that, that, that happen when, when they don't get good advice. You know, that actually reminds me of my question. I, I've got it. Uh -oh. I've got it. <laughs> so, well, so I know that a lot of homes nowadays are being built with um, solar systems. Mm -hmm. And um, so like with the tract housing, um, some solar company will uh, team up with that builder. No, and normally the roofer, the roofing company is the one yeah. that puts the solar on. So, and then, so, but what I'm finding, what I'm seeing is a lot of times those systems are undersized. Vastly. Yes. They, so they give you six panels. Right. You know, and they'll go, oh, this is a solar house. I bought a solar house. And yep. six months later, they're like, my house has solar. How come I still have a three hundred dollar a month bill? Right. It's because they gave you enough solar to run your fridge, right. and not anything else. <laughs> yeah. And so you know this new law that every house being built has to have solar. I've had a lot of people say, "Does that hurt your business? Does it help your business?" It actually helps us because we end up going in. People want solar. Yeah. They buy a house expecting to save money on the electric bill, but the system's so undersized or poorly installed that we have to go in and build it out and fix it up and make it better. Yeah. Um, that actually helps us quite a bit. That was my question. So do your systems place nice with other systems? Can you beef them up and add to them? Yeah, yeah normally <laughs> we end up taking that system and putting it onto a new inverter okay. and combining it with more solar panels. Um, I get asked a lot about solar tiles. Yeah. You see ads yes. like Tesla's solar tile. Right. Um, the solar tile technology is just not there yet. Sure. Um, it's, it's, uh, most of the homes that have solar tiles on them now, yeah. they've had to be disconnected or removed. Wow. Um, like solar, like any electrical component, uh -huh. works best when it's cool or has good airflow. Yeah. That's why your computer has a fan on it, for example. Um, and so solar panels now, we can, they look better and they've got higher wattage, but we don't like to set them right on the roof. We like to keep them up so that they're more efficient. Okay. You know, and if it's on the second story or even, you know, we, we, we cut the end of the rail so that they're nice and tight, um, it's all black. So we make it look really nice, but yeah. solar tiles are so inefficient, they don't produce. We end up just taking them off most of the time, yeah. re-roofing that area and then putting standard solar panels up. They just, they just a better investment. Yeah, and yeah, I know you guys can hear the sound of the paper ripping. That's just Andre getting us ready for the raffle, so. Yeah, and I'm just trying to fill time for you. Yeah, I, I love it. All this ripping. Maybe tell us a cool story. I, I, I have a, I have a story else. person. Yeah. Batteries, I get oh. asked oh. all the time about batteries. Yeah. Look, I love batteries for solar systems. Yeah. It's a, like you hear about the Tesla wall, and um, LG has a new battery, and um, Outbacker has a battery. There's lots of batteries out there. Yeah. Um, but I don't think batteries are a very good investment right now. So if you know, like if most houses, if they go, oh, I want a Tesla wall in case the power goes out, I want to have backup power. Well, that Tesla wall only uh, powers a 20 amp circuit. Yeah. So you'll need like seven or eight of them. You know, and at 4,000 bucks a pop, it's not a great deal. So right now I kind of tell people that batteries are like um, VCRs when they first came out. Okay. You know, they're $2,000 or 1800 bucks or whatever they were. And, you know, a few years later, they were $300. Right. So batteries right now have about a 22 year break even. Oh, if, wow. if installed properly and correctly sized and all that. Um, I would I tell people to wait a couple of years. Yeah. Um, and if you want backup power for um, breathing devices or because you're, emergency preparedness, you know, yeah. sensitive or any of those things, <laughs> get a generator. Okay. And we, we install generators that um, are wired in, they automatically turn on if the power goes out, it's connected to the propane or the natural gas. I, I, if you want backup power, batteries are way too expensive right now. Right. Okay, and I, and I hate to turn away business, but yeah. wait a couple years. Well, and the way I understand it, the technology hasn't caught up, right? So you're you're replacing them every seven to eight years versus yeah. panels that are... The new ones might last 10 years, sure. the newer batteries, yeah. and the technology is improving. It's just not to that point where the production levels and the, the industry overall momentum and experience is the point where the price has dropped yet. Okay. And so, you know, the industry needs to mature a little bit. Yeah. Technology needs a, a little bit more tweaks. Um, but I'd say we're probably three years away from batteries being um, a good, a decent investment. You want to check and see if we have any new shares? Um, not any, nope. No, okay. Are you ready to do this? Sure. <laughs> okay. Do I, here. Yeah, just, just mix them around. And I'm sorry to everyone that doesn't get theirs full. <laughs> Jump rule, please, but that's okay. You can call and get your evaluation and all that good stuff. Cheyenne Casey. Whoa, <laughs> Cheyenne, yay! And you know what? She's been saying this whole time. This is her favorite interview, so. <laughs> Guys, I know um, audio is not good. No, so I, I pulled out the microphone. 
So I bought a I bought a microphone. I bought a microphone and I won't mention the name of the retailer that I went to, but they were not helpful. So we're back to the drawing board. I'll take it back and um, get my money back and then we'll be back next week with the new microphone and and keep your fingers crossed this one works out. So thanks everyone. Thank you guys for watching. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.